Since its inception in 1858, the American Numismatic Society has been an active supporter of metallic art, producing dozens of medals and publishing books on medals and their artists. Just in the last couple of years, in fact, the Society launched a new book series, Studies of Medallic Art, and celebrated long-term benefactor Eric P. Newman's 100th birthday with a medal commissioned from Philadelphia-based sculptor Amy Kahn. Around the time of Mr. Newman's birth, 102 years ago now, the ANS was part of a much larger international movement to promote the art of the metal as a medium in and of itself. In France and the Low Countries, important art critics like Roger Marx and sculptors like Oscarotti were pushing hard to define the art metal against other art media, as well as the metal's own numismatic heritage. They also sought to create new venues for the exhibition of medals and to give artists a wider audience for their work. Many U.S. artists, meanwhile, were studying in Europe, primarily in Paris, and soon brought their interests and ideas from medallic art back home. Responding to this growing interest in the U.S., the ANS hosted a school for coin and medallic art design, taught partly by Victor David Brenner, the famed designer of the Lincoln Cent, which is still circulating today and organized a major international exhibit of contemporary medals in 1910, which brought together the works of over 200 artists, primarily from Europe. In the wake of this enormously successful exhibit, the ANS launched a new award for recognizing achievements in the art of the medal at the instigation of ANS benefactor J. Sanford Saltis. Established immediately before the First World War in 1913, the J. Sanford Saltus Award for Signal Achievement in the Art of the Medal remains, a century later, one of the most highly coveted and prestigious awards in medallic arts. Saltus himself was a Francophile and frequent traveler to Europe, and had long been impressed with the quality of pre-war medallic art and its extensive promotion in France especially. The hope in establishing the Saltus Award was to encourage the development of medallic art in the United States, so initially the award was limited to just U.S.-based artists. Because the First World War disrupted so much of life in the U.S. and Europe, the first Saltus Award wasn't given until 1919, after the war had ended. Since the 1980s, the field of contenders has been open to medallic artists worldwide, ensuring rigorous competition and the continued promotion of an art form that, like many others, has witnessed significant development and controversies in recent decades. To say the least, one of the problems confronting the Saltus Award Committee today is the vexing question, what is the medal? As we'll see in a moment with our most recent Saltus Awardee, most contemporary medallic artists push their definition of the medal to extremes. But first, let's take a look at the actual medal we award. Alexander Augustus Weinman, himself the winner of the 1920 award, was commissioned to design this medal. A German-born apprentice of Augustus St. Gaudens and Daniel Chester French, both of whom were enormously important U.S. sculptors at the beginning of the 20th century, Weinman became, like his mentors, an immensely popular and prolific artist. He's best known in numismatic circles for his so-called Mercury Head Dime and Walking Liberty Half Dollar, both of which were introduced in 1916. Weinman's work also adorns many of New York City's most notable edifices, all designed by the famed architectural firm McKim, Mead, and White. His work includes, for example, architectural sculpture on the facade of the Pierpont Morgan Library at Madison Avenue and 36th Street, and on the now tragically lost Beaux-Arts Magnum Opus, Pennsylvania Station, which was torn down in 1964. The most colossal of Weinman's collaborations with McKim, Mead, and White, however, was the municipal building, the east end of Chambers Street, one of the earliest skyscrapers in the city and one which still dominates Lower Manhattan. For this project, Weinman was given control over the entire sculptural program. The crowning achievement, quite literally, of this project is civic fame, a 25-foot tall sheet copper statue that still gleams atop the building nearly 600 feet above the sidewalks. All of Weinman's work has a certain objective classical restraint and refinement to it, but there is as well a more subjective, luminous beauty to his work which really comes out in the Saltus Award Medal, certainly one of the most stunningly beautiful medals produced in the U.S. over the course of the last century, and which remains a fitting tribute to those artists who keep the medallic art tradition alive today. Portuguese artist João Duarte is the recipient of the Society's 2011 J. Sanford Saltus Award for Signal Achievement in the Art of the Metal. Graduated in 1978 from the School of Fine Arts in Lisbon with an emphasis in plastic arts and sculpture, 
Professor Duarte serves today on the Fine Arts faculty at the University of Lisbon. Over the course of a highly prolific career, he's focused his energies primarily on sculpture and medallic art, producing 45 public art mo monuments located throughout Portugal and a dozen commemorative coins for the Portuguese mint. But it's the 150 or so medals he's created to date that have most caught the eye of critics, collectors, and curators, earning him a number of prestigious awards already, including the Kalos Gulbenkian Foundation Prize for Innovation and Creativity. Duarte's medals have been featured in over a dozen solo artist shows, including an important 30-year retrospective of his work held in 2010 at the Portuguese Mint, a show that documented not just the evolution of Duarte as an artist, but also his critical role in the continuing development of the art medal in Portugal. The genius of Duarte's work, in part, lies in his keen awareness of the long tradition of the metal, from its numismatic origins in 15th century Italy to its post-World War II sculptural permutations. Not one to always abandon traditional aspects of the metal, its circular shape and use of legends, for example, Duarte recognizes the essential strengths of the inherited format, but moves well beyond its limitations. Key to his vision is an understanding of the traditional metal as handheld art, and the way in which the viewer or holder interacts intimately with the object in hand. While generations of connoisseurs have delighted in the visual details of metals and the tactile pleasures of the heft and high relief of these objects, any such enjoyment is ultimately passive. Duarte's work, by contrast, invites viewers to be more active. In fact, many of his metals can be disassembled, many have moving parts, and some produce sounds, adding a whole new sensory range to the experience of the art. Manipulating and listening to the metals becomes as much a part of the experience as simply holding and looking. Consequently, Duarte's metals really demand to be held, since full appreciation of the objects cannot be obtained by simply looking at them from behind glass.